I want to thank you all for coming out. I want to thank Brother Morgan for coming. It's been a blessing already this morning. Uh, we baptized one. Um, I think we're baptizing tomorrow, so that'll be a blessing. Amen. That'll be a blessing. Uh, take these services seriously. Don't let it just pass you by. Dig into it. Take notes. I hope you're bringing your pens and your papers. Take notes and and um, really try to try to apply these things in your life. Really, I'm I'm begging you to do it. Just do it. Bro, Morgan, it's all yours. Every time I hear that song, it makes me think of something in early days of my ministry, my pastor, Dr. Rydell, said, Richard, it don't matter how good you start, it's how you finish. He says, God said, moreover, it's required in the steward that a man be found faithful. And that's all I can think of. Every time I thought of quitting, because the thought does enter your mind sometimes, that always came to mind. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Hey. Don't find many people like that anymore. Those that will stick it out to the end. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 18. We are here to hopefully begin a revival. Hopefully and prayerfully God will send a revival to Dulce America like you've never seen before. Maybe it would be the revival that our country so desperately needs. Wouldn't it be great if it started right here? Yes. Amen. First Kings chapter 18. Verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And jump over to chapter 18, verse 41. Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up on top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up. Say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot. Get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Father, I pray now, you'll speak to hearts tonight. We at uh, Good News need revival. This reservation is crying for a revival. Lord, I pray you'd send this week the spirit of revival in the hearts of these people. And Lord, we'll be careful to thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There had been a great famine in the land. For three years, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse number 1 says this, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Galilee, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Elijah was God's prophet. For the events remaining in these chapters, 
We don't find much about Elijah except he obeyed God. And God blessed him with power and a full ministry that was pleasing to God. Elijah is pretty much representative of all the Old Testament prophets. In the early part of this chapter, Elijah had just challenged the prophets of the devil and the power of Baal. And don't you decide that you're going to go try anything that they did. Elijah had been prepared for this work and he was able to accomplish it because of his yieldedness to God. Men today or ever since Elijah have not been called upon by God to recreate this scene. When Elijah called fire down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice of Baal, it was a great victory for God, not for Elijah. And verses 41 through 46 is a great story about revival and how revival can come to any place where the presence of God is recognized. So number one, I want you to see the voice of revival. Elijah said, there is a sound of abundance of rain. If you please, Elijah could hear rain. The land was thirsty. For three years, there was no rain. The ground was hard and cracked. It was ready to receive water. Your city is ready for revival. You haven't had one here in years. Maybe never. The people are thirsty. The spiritual hearts are cracked open. They're ready for revival. The people are ready for a downpour from God. See, most people don't really know what revival is. When Billy Sunday preached revivals, it would close up all the sin shops in town. They knew he was coming. The bars were closed. The brothels were closed. Because Billy Sunday was coming. D.L. Moody's revivals were over and the uh, city hamlets and villages were aflame for God. Multitudes got saved. By the way, I noticed what I said. After he would leave the city, people were on fire. The disciples of the Lord Jesus turned the known world upside down. Can you imagine that? The known world of the day. Twelve men turned the world upside down. Hmm. We have trouble getting enough people to work in the church. Yet 12 men turn the world upside down. Many don't even come during revival. They find some excuse to stay home. By the way, those that are missing tonight, I wonder if they're going to get revival. Surely if there was something to say tonight that they needed to hear, they're not going to hear it. Isn't that sad when people just... You've been planning for this. You prepare for it. You make uh, flyers. Put an ugly guy's picture on it. And people don't come. Supposedly leaders. They're not here. 21st century Christians don't know what real revival is. The great theologian of the past, R.A. Torrey, said this, quote, If a Christian realized what would change, what that would take place in their lifestyles and daily living, and in their service for the Lord Jesus Christ, most would pray, O Lord, please don't send revival. You all need revival. We need to listen to the voice of revival. We just had revival in our church a couple weeks ago. And our people said, this is the best revival we've ever had. And I said, we'll judge that over the next month or two. See, revival affects people after the speakers are gone. We need to listen to the voice of revival. 
By the way, you know there's more drunkards out there than ever before? More homos than ever? More murderers than ever? More rapes than ever before? More divorce than ever before? Read the other day, in Christian circles, the divorce rate is exactly the same as it is for those that aren't Christian. What happened when they stand before God? And they stand before God and each other. And they proclaim their faithfulness to God. And they, they make commitments something like, till death do us part. Better or worse, richer or poor, in sickness and health. And that lasts as long as everything's peachy and creamy. When the hard times come, all of a sudden it's, see ya. Adios. I wonder how many folks, when they give their vows, are literally making them to each other and to God. More rebellion than ever before. More stealing. Revival was calling us into action. The voice of revival was calling. We need it desperately. If we don't have it, we are doomed. The voice of revival. Look at the venture of revival. Verses 42 and 43. Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said unto his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Hmm. Revival requires great preparation. Modern time revival is kind of like you put an ad in the local newspaper, put a starting date on the marquee in front of the church, and sit back and wait for the flock to come roaring in. It doesn't happen like that. We see the results of that kind of revival in our denominational papers. Evangelist Smith was at the church April the 1st through the 7th. Nobody got saved. Nobody was baptized. Nobody joined the church. However, we sure had some good preaching. And we need more of that good preaching. Folks, we don't need more good preaching. We need results. You need revival. Elijah went to the mountain. He began to pray. If you look at that carefully, it looks like to me he prayed for eight days straight. He didn't eat. He didn't drink. He prayed for revival. See, we've grown customary to accept the type of revival meetings that's customary. Even accepted by God. Nobody getting saved. Nobody getting baptized. See, a great revival would require great ventures. You will not have revival without work. I said, Elijah spent seven days in prayer. Then he involved his people. He sent his servant to go and check and see if the community was ready for revival. The servant came back and said, nope. Nothing happening out there. He said, go again and again and again and again. Go until it is ready. By the way, you're not going to have revival until you want it more than vacations. You won't have it until you want it more than a golf course or your hunting trips or your bank accounts. You're not going to have revival until you want it more than anything else on the face of this earth. You want God to do something supernatural in Good News Baptist Church and in Dulce America. Revival will require great ventures in prayer. 
How much time have you spent in prayer for this revival? And I'm not talking about seconds or minutes. How much time have you spent in prayer for one thing? Revival. God, I know it's a good thing to pray. God, do what needs to be done in my life for me to have revival. See, if you'll have revival, then she might have revival. And if she has revival, she might have revival. She has revival, her husband has. And all of a sudden, you got revival. Remember the upper room in Acts chapter 8? They had revival. Prayer was required. Somebody said prayer is the fertilizer for revival. Hmm. It is the key that opens the door to revival. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? I, I tell you, it would be great for this preacher. If after I left here a week from now, your pastor called me up and said, you know what? So-and-so had revival last week. You wouldn't believe what so-and-so's doing. You wouldn't believe the change in their life. You know what you do then? You fall on your face and thank God. Because revival comes from him, not from a preacher. It's more than cottage prayer meetings. You need some Mount Carmel praying. Requires more venture than that. Venture will require great ventures in church memberships involvement. You need to go and go and go and go again. You need to saturate your town with the gospel. Some of you are going to have to work harder, get up earlier, stay up later, and give more than you ever dreamed possible just to have revival. You know what that means? That means sacrifice. And you know, we live in a day and age when folks don't like to sacrifice. They just don't. That's obvious when you have faith promise. We just had, got finished our faith promise. Man, I was so excited. Our little tiny church increased their faith promise $240 a month. You know what that works out to be? Four more new missionaries. That means I'm going to have more missionaries than I do people. Say, how are you doing that? I'm not. God is. God is. Great thing. You know what? They're giving more. We just got done. You can ask Rome if you think I'm a liar. We just got done our revival. Now we pay for our revival. A change jug. From the end of August to whenever Rome comes, we use that chain for love offering. Okay? On our kids. And by the way, and from that to camp, we use for camp funds. By the way, we were able to give one of the biggest love offerings I ever gave to speakers. Because our kids picked up change. And the people in our church like seeing the kids go, by the way, you kids ought to love being going around getting money. If you smile at them, they'll give you a dollar if they don't have change. Huh. You know what that is? People giving more than we ever dreamed possible. By the way, most of the people in my church, except for my son Richard, are on fixed incomes. It means they don't get no more money. They can work longer and harder, but they don't get any more money. They're on Social Security. Uh, our, our, some of our Indian folk do get dividend checks. You know what their dividend checks are? $58 a month. That's their dividend. And it never goes up, it never goes down. That's what they get. Hmm. Shoshones get a little more because there's not as many of them. Rapahos get less because there's more of them. The venture of revival. Then the, number three is the vision of revival. Verse 44 said, There arose a little cow out of the sea like a man's hand. 
There should be a vision of revival all over the land today. People may not know it, but they are hungry for a great display of God's power. The emptiness of man's soul is because of a lack of revival. Man's quest to fill that emptiness with possessions and pleasures and alcohol and drugs never, ever satisfy. We want answers for our problems when revival is all we really need. We want to see our church grow when all we need to see is a great outpouring of God's power. We want excitement. We want entertainment. When what all we really need to see is the power of God on display. 1 Kings 18, 39, it said, When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. You know what they saw? The power of God falling. These people looked on as Elijah called fire from heaven. They were watching to see what would happen, and they saw it. And they recognized that it was the work of God. I mean, the gods of that day were standing there for days, pounding on themselves, calling down and cutting themselves, calling down their God for power, and nothing happened. Your city is filled with people just like these. They're looking on in curiosity. They look on with expectation. What's happening over good news? They see your buildings and wonder what God is doing here. They ride by it every day. Most of the town rides by and goes to a dollar store. By the way, if I were you, I'd keep the lights on. Until about 11 o'clock at night. Why? Make them think something's happening. Hmm. Wonder what's going on. Why in the world they got lights on it? 9.30 at night. I wonder what's going on there. You can have revival. Your pastor needs people to do their part. People who will give all of their efforts toward one thing. Revival. The way talking about it won't do it. Wishing for it ain't going to have it happen. See, the vision started with one person in verse 41. Elijah, just a little hand, just a little something. Are you hungry? Are you tired of hearing about revival and never seeing one? When's the last time you were a part of anything that was a revival? Do you know Good News Baptist Church had a revival? I believe it was in 84, 85. I'm not sure of the dates. I remember like it was yesterday. I don't know what brought it on. But you people stayed in the church till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And by the way, they didn't just sit around and talk about fishing. They'd sit on the steps over there in the old church with their Bibles open. And they'd talk about and then people would be getting saved. The pastors would be in their office leading people to Christ. And you couldn't turn them down. My heart pounds with desire for God's power. You know, when we get we meet here tomorrow night, it doesn't matter if I show up or if Rome shows up or if your pastor shows up. But it sure would be nice to have God show up. Let him do something that's so needed in your community. If you don't have revival soon, there's going to be a lot of people die and go to hell. You say, well, the rapture's going to happen. Then a lot of people are going to die and go to hell. And they ain't going to have a chance to get saved. Seven years of tribulation. You need revival. And finally, I want you to see the victory of revival. Verse 45, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with cloud and wind, and there was a great rain. 
the results of all that was done was a great rain. It didn't just come in a sprinkle. It rained. The wind blew, but that wasn't all. It rained. The clouds filled the heavens. They were as dark as night, but it rained. The ground was satisfied. It rained. Revival is what you need. Stay with me and I'll be done. You don't need good preaching. You need revival. You don't need a great singing group. You need revival. You don't need anything except revival. A little sprinkle won't do it. Heaven filled with dark clouds and wind blowing isn't enough. You need a great rain. Revival will change your city. Homes will be mended. Social problems will be reduced. Teens will find a purpose for life. Maybe I should say young people. Do you ever see a day and an age when young people have no purpose in life? No direction? What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. No direction. Where are those that say, you know what? I'm going to go to Bible college and I'm going to serve God the rest of my life. You know, the night I got saved, October the 16th, 1977. They t- brought us down in front of the church. And everybody up there was going to Bible college. And they got to me and said, what happened to you? I said, I got saved back there. And I said, I only got one regret. I was 29 years old. I'm only 39 now, so just so you all know that. Well, I said, I have one regret. If I was a young man, I would serve God the rest of my life. <laughs> And there's a scripture that says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Within a year I was in Bible college, and four years later I was in Dulce, New Mexico. And I've been serving God all these years. A purpose, economic pressures will be eased. You know, the one thing I don't worry about is finances. If I don't have it, I don't have it. God knows about it. He'll take care of me. He has for the last 40 years. He's not going to quit now. Hmm. A great rain of revival will water the spiritual need in your town. You need a revival. It'll quench the fires of opposition from the devil. He can't stand against God, and that's what we're talking about, the power of God falling down. Don't you think Satan wanted to have some kind of fire take place when the prophets of Baal were dancing around on top of their sacrifice? But he has no power when God's in control. And the man of God do that. Matter of fact, he even mocked them, made fun of them. Made fun of their maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's just too busy. Aren't you glad God's not too busy for you? Listen, if you have your Bible, drunkards will never drink again. Do you know what that's like? I do. I remember the last drink I ever had. It was a rolling rock beer and a little bottle of blackberry brandy. And then I walked into that church. I figured it'd get me through to the end of church. By the way, it's got me through now 44 years. God took it away that night. I got saved. That's what happened when revival takes place. Harlots stop being harlots. Drunks stop being drunks. Bars start to close. You must have had a revival here because the water hole's not there no more. When I lived here, that was a big hot spot for all the drunks, the water hole saloon. And I owned a property right next to it. That's where I was going to live. But my wife told me different. Wouldn't it be nice if the adult theaters were closed? 
like maybe the television? Huh. You see more filth on television than ever. By the way, all you have to do is watch the commercials. And if you've got any spiritual character, it'll make you sick to your stomach. I'm tired of seeing men kiss. Hmm. I am tired of it. That's no way to celebrate Valentine's Day. You say, where do you see that on television? Hayes Jewelry Store. Tell you what, it makes it makes me puke. Yeah. Revival will reach the heart of every sinner in this town, but it has to start here in the house of God. And we'll talk about that tomorrow night when we talk about Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people. That's where it must begin. God's people. Not the lost crowd. They don't know what's happening. We're looking for a little sign. Well, I see a hand out there in the sky. And there's a sound of an abundance of rain. How about you? You tired of playing games? In the time that you as a Christian decided it's time for God's people to have revival. Every head bowed and every eye closed.